stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Hey friend, this is Rick Renner and I want to welcome you to today's program. We're going to be talking about the rapture of the church. We started yesterday and today we're going to continue. Sometimes people write to me and they say, Rick, do you really believe in a rapture? Absolutely. Let me make my answer very clear. Yes, I believe in the rapture of the church. It is one of the clearest doctrines in the Bible. We saw that yesterday in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to go back there just for a moment today. Then we're going to jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul vividly describes what's going to happen in the very moment of the rapture. It is amazing. But hey, if you need prayer, please write to us. We're waiting to hear from you. And as soon as your email shows up in our inbox, we're going to put our faith together with you for whatever you're facing in your life. Or you can call us right now. We're waiting to take your call. We really like to pray with people who write to us. And I want to tell you that I'm offering you my series, which is called The Coming of the Antichrist. After the rapture of the church, the Antichrist is going to make his grand appearance to the world almost immediately. What does the Bible tell us about the Antichrist? Well, that is in front of us, so we need to know. The back of this series says people talk, and talk about the coming of Jesus all the time. But once Christ has come for his church, the Bible says the Antichrist will be revealed to the world. In one split second, this man of lawlessness will come out of hiding and will go public. Wow. In this 10-part series, we dive into this end time subject like you've never heard it before the coming of the Antichrist. This would be so good for you. If you want to know prophetically what is in the future, this would be great for you to hear. And it comes with a study guide. The two of these together are just dynamite. And I have to remind you again that right now we're offering you my brand new book. Please order it. You say, well, what is the book? Here it is. It's called Last Days Survival Guide. My friends, we're marching through the last days. That's why the cover has the Bible and boots. You got to put on your boots. We are God's troops and we are marching through this season with the word of God. And because we have the word of God, we won't just survive it. We are going to thrive. We are God's people. We are anointed for the moment we are living in. We're not living in this age by accident. I'm chosen. You're chosen. But we need to know how to survive all the bizarre things that are taking place in the world today. And that's why I wrote this book. It is a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. You know, God is so good to us that he tells us everything in advance. And if we'll pay attention, we'll know what's coming and we'll know how to circumvent every attack and how to survive, even if we're surrounded by perilous times. If you never order another book by Rick Renner, please order this one. This is a book you need, your family needs, and you should order several because this is definitely a book you're going to want to share with a friend or two. It's called Last Day's Survival Guide. And again, I want to say thank you to everyone that is a partner. You are making a difference in somebody else's life. And when you become a partner, we immediately send you my book, Life in the Combat Zone, because it is dedicated to our partners. This is a book that will help you know how to get through hard times. It's dedicated to our partners. And we also send Denise's little book, but a dynamic book called The Gift of Forgiveness. But hey, grab your Bible and let's go back to... 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and pick up where we left off yesterday. I've got my Bible. I hope you have yours. We always use the Bible in this program. But today I'm going to begin by reading the RIV of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 and verse 16. Then I'm going to pause and I'm going to comment again on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. But listen to the RIV of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 16, this is such a good translation. Listen to this. For we declare unto you by the word of the Lord, those who are physically alive 
and who have survived everything. I'm talking about the remaining remnant that will still be left around at the time of the coming of the Lord. That living and surviving remnant will not precede those that have already died. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a mighty military command. The King James Version says the Lord will descend with a shout. But that word shout was a specific word used to describe a commander who gave a shout to muster the troops together, to galvanize all the troops. And when he gave the shout, the shout was always a declaration that war was commencing and the shout was also the guarantee that at the end of the battle, he would be the supreme victor. And that's why in this verse, I translate it like this. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a mighty military command that will arouse the saints and galvanize God's troops to action. And along with that command, at that time will also be heard the immense voice of an archangel, along with the blast of God's war trumpet to signal the final battle, ultimate victory, and vanquishing of all of God's enemies is about to occur. That war trumpet blast will be the indication that God's enemies have lost their long-standing battle with him and that he remains victorious and supreme over everyone, over every situation, and over every realm, total victory. And exactly when that war trumpet sound goes forth, the dead in Christ will immediately stand upright on their feet as they are resurrected to a brand new resurrected royal status this resurrection will take place as a first priority before the next sequence of events takes place. All of that is in verse 15 and verse 16. Is that amazing? But wait, then you come to 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 where the King James Version says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We saw yesterday, I want to repeat today, that in verse 17 when it says then, it is the Greek word epeta, which means upon that very explicit moment, exactly at that moment, exactly then, precisely then. So as soon as the dead in Christ are raised, the next in the sequence of events will take place. Then at that very moment, we which are alive and remain. And I have to comment again. I was so shocked when I read this in the Greek because I'd never read it before, never paid attention to it, and never heard anybody ever say it. But the Greek literally says those that are still vibrant, the living ones. It implies that many people will be spiritually asleep or they will have lost their spiritual vitality. But those that are still vibrant, those that are still spiritually alive, and then he says, and remain, the word remain is a Greek word which describes the remnant of a garment. Only a remnant is left remaining. So you could actually translate the verse to mean the remaining ones, the surviving ones, the remnant, and it implies that there's going to be such a mass defection from the faith in the end of the age that it may not be very many. But for those that are still spiritually vibrant and are alive, spiritually alive, and the remnant that remains unto the coming of the Lord, wow, what's going to happen to them? It says they shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Caught up together, as I told you yesterday, is a compound of two Greek words, the word apo, which means away, and the word harpazo. The word harpazo always, always means to seize or to snatch out of danger just in the nick of time. The very use of this word tells us that we will be really praying for the rapture to come. It will be a difficult moment. And when it is difficult and it feels like we're surrounded by danger and by peril, just in that moment, Apo harpazo, the Lord will seize us out of the situation. He will remove us from the danger just in the nick of time. And the verse says, we'll be caught up together. That's how the King James Version translates it. With them, that is with those that have already been raised from the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The word meet is fabulous. It is the Greek word which describes a reception or an encounter. 
It is a technical word used to describe the reception of newly arrived officials, royalty, or dignitaries, which means when we are raptured, Jesus is going to receive us as the dignitaries he knows that we are. And the Bible says we'll meet him in the air. Even the word air is important, the Greek word eros. It doesn't describe the cosmos, but rather it describes the lower regions of the air. And this agrees with chapter 4, verse 15, which says the Lord shall descend from the heavens. He's going to come out of the heavens into the very lowest regions of the atmosphere. He's going to give that shout. And when we are raptured, we're going to meet him in the lower regions of the air where Jesus is going to give us a VIP reception. Is that awesome? And the verse goes on to say, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Ever be in Greek is the word pantote, which means at all times, all the time, always, continually, or perpetually. And I would translate verse 17 like this. Now hang on to your seat. This is glorious. Then at that exact synchronized moment, those who are still physically alive and who have survived everything, I'm talking about the remnant that will still be around and left remaining at this time. They will suddenly and supernaturally be snatched away out of imminent danger just in the nick of time as the Lord instigates a divine rescue operation to transport them into the clouds to join those who have been resurrected. There in the air's lower atmosphere where the Lord has descended to meet them, those who were raised from the dead and the remnant who was supernaturally snatched out of danger will encounter the Lord. And at that encounter, the Lord will roll out the red carpet to give the new arrivees a royal reception to match the VIP status he knows they deserve. Then and after that, we will always at all times and forevermore be with the Lord. Is that glorious? So yes, I believe in the rapture here. It is clearly described. But Paul describes it again in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and let's see what Paul said beginning in verse 51 where he also describes the rapture of the church and the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Listen to what he says. This verse is so glorious. You can hang on to it. It really gives you hope for your future. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Paul writes and he begins by saying, Behold, wow. I'll comment on that in just a moment. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Then he says, for in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. But let's go back to verse 51, where Paul begins with the word, Behold, the word behold is the Greek word edu. This word edu describes bewilderment, shock, amazement, something that just dumbfounds you or leaves you feeling flabbergasted. It is so magnificent. You just have to pause and say, wow, this is amazing. So now Paul injects his own feelings into what he's about to describe. He's about to describe the resurrection of the dead and the rapture of the church. And he begins with the word edu, behold, Wow, can you imagine it? This leaves me nearly speechless. This is bewildering to think this is going to take place. That's really what the word behold means. Well, what is he so stunned about? He tells us, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When Paul says I show, in Greek it says something very different. It says the word Lego. The word Lego means I say. A literal translation would be I say a mystery. And the reason that I'm pausing to give you the difference in I show and I say is because I want you to understand that mysteries are reve revealed by speaking. And now Paul says I'm going to show, but the Greek actually says I say. Mysteries are revealed by speech. That's why this TV program is so important. When I speak the Word of God on TV, mysteries are revealed to people. Now Paul is speaking, and in the process of speaking, he's opening a mystery. The word mystery, the Greek word mysterion, describes a secret. It describes a mystery, something that was once hidden but now has been revealed. 
Now Paul says, I'm going to give you the big secret, which previously people did not understand, but now it has been revealed. Listen to me. I'm going to speak to you a mystery that has been revealed. We will not all sleep. The word sleep is the Greek word, which means to sleep, to sleep deeply. It is the sleep of death. It is the very word for death. And it's where we get the word for a coma or catacombs. Paul says we're not all going to go into the grave. Every believer is not going to die. There's going to be a generation that will not see death. And that is the generation that has arrived when the Lord comes to catch us up to meet him in the air. And Paul says we will not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. What does that mean? The word change means to change or to exchange one thing for another thing. And it is exactly the same word, which means to be transformed, which means those of us that are alive and remain, when the rapture takes place and we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air, our bodies are going to be exchanged for a new kind of body. Our bodies are going to be miraculously and supernaturally instantly transformed and that's why I would translate the verse like this. Here's the RIV of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Hold on to your seat. This is awesome. Listen to this. What I'm about to say will totally flabbergast you. But listen carefully, for I'm going to tell you something that was previously an unknown mystery that has been revealed to us. Here it is. We will not all die, but all, the dead and even the living, will be altered, changed, miraculously modified, and transformed. That's going to happen to us when we are raptured. Our human bodies are going to be transformed. And the next verse says, in a moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. But notice in this verse, again, he mentions the trump, the same trump that he referred to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, 16, and 17. He's talking about the moment when Christ comes, when Jesus descends from the heavens into the air's lower atmosphere, and Jesus gives a shout to announce that the last battle is about to begin. And of course, after the, after the rapture of the church is going to commence the tribulation, it's going to be a massive battle. And Jesus is going to win that battle. And at the end of that seven years, he's going to come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But when he descends, he's going to give a shout to muster the troops, to galvanize all the saints. It will be the announcement that the final battle and the final victory is about to be commenced. And the Bible says in that moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We know I grew up in the church and I always heard about the rapture. And I always wondered, what does that mean in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye? What is the twinkling of an eye? I can remember even looking in people's eyes to see if I could catch a twinkling of an eye to figure out what was a twinkling of an eye. Well, Paul begins in this verse by saying, in a moment. The word moment is the Greek word atomos. It's where we get the word for an atom, an atom. Listen to this. It describes an indivisible moment, a split second, an instant. It's where we get the word atom. It describes something that is tiny or microscopic, or as I said, an indivisible moment. It's going to happen so fast. It's going to seem like a flash something microscopic, it's going to happen so fast. And then Paul adds in the twinkling of an eye. He's trying to explain what a moment is. He said, it's like the twinkling of an eye. The word twinkling is the Greek word repe. And the word repe describes a twinkling or a twitch. It is so fast, it is almost undetectable. Have you ever been sitting around and reading a book or watching a TV program or talking to somebody and all of a sudden your eye begin to twitch? The twitch of an eye is so fast that you can't even catch it. You can't turn to somebody and say, did you see my eye twitch? Because it comes and it goes. Now Paul says all of these miraculous events are going to happen in a moment, a tomos, an indivisible moment of time. It's going to happen like
like that. He says it's going to be so fast, it's going to be like the twinkling of an eye or what we would describe as an eye twitch. It's going to happen that fast. He says, at the last trump. And here again, we have this word trump, which depicts a war trumpet. Emphatically, that is what this word trump describes. It is a war trumpet. A war trumpet, listen as I read from my notes, that boldly announces victory and the vanquishing of enemies. The trumpet is blasted at the outset of a military campaign. Prophetically, it depicts that moment when a trumpet was blasted to instigate war and to declare triumph and victory even at the very outset of the military campaign. It was used in the Old Testament for moments when God summoned his people to war. Now that word is used in this verse, which means when Jesus gives his shout and when the trumpet is blasted, it is a declaration. God summoning the troops together and blasting, not just that the war has begun, but he is guaranteeing and announcing victory at the very beginning of what will be the seven-year tribulation when he's going to put down all evil. And then the verse goes on to say, the dead shall be raised. The word dead, the Greek word hoi, nikroi, it means all the corpses. We know from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it's talking about those that have died in Christ. The Bible says they shall be raised incorruptible. Oh, the word incorruptible describes the miracle that's going to take place as our bodies are transformed. This word incorruptible describes something that is incapable of decay. That which is incapable of suffering the effects of wear, tear, and age, something that is timeless, immortal, indestructible, or I say it is the everlasting facelift, body lift. Suddenly your body will no longer show the effects of age, wear, and tear. And that's why Paul says we shall be changed. Our bodies are going to be exchanged. They're going to be transformed. And I would translate 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 like this. In a moment, a split second, indivisible atom of time, as fast as the twitch of an eye. At the very last trump, that war trumpet will loudly sound to signal the final battle, ultimate victory, and vanquishing of all of God's enemies is about to happen. That blast will be God's way of letting everyone know that his enemies have lost their footing and long-standing battle with him and that he reigns victorious and supreme in total victory. In that flash, the dead will stand upright on their feet and will be resurrected to a brand new resurrected royal status. And at that exact moment, they will miraculously receive new bodies that are incapable of decay and that will never again show the effects of wear, tear, and age, timeless, immortal, indestructible bodies. And we that are still alive when all this happens, we will be supernaturally transformed as our old bodies are exchanged for new ones that are also incapable of decay and that will never again show the effects of wear, tear, and age. Our bodies will literally be altered, changed, miraculously modified and transformed into timeless, immortal, indestructible bodies. That is a translation of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse, two, so, verse 52. So yes, I believe in the rapture of the church, and that's what's going to happen to those who remain and are alive at the time of the coming of the Lord. That is in our future. Well, we're out of time. But when we come back tomorrow, we're going to begin to see what's going to happen to the very end of the age, just before the Antichrist shows up on the world stage. Don't miss it. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. People often talk about the coming of Jesus, but once Jesus has raptured the church, the Bible says the Antichrist will be revealed to the world. In one split second, the Antichrist will come out of hiding and go public. In the 10-part series, The Coming of the Antichrist, 
Rick Renner delves into this end time subject like you've never heard it before. Based on 1 Thessalonians, Rick explores verses that can be difficult, making them easy to understand. Since we are living in the end of the ages, we need to know what is coming in the near future. If you are interested in what the Bible says about the future, then this is one series you need to digest. Rick answers, who is the Antichrist? What will he be like when he shows up? When will he be revealed to the world? What is stopping him from being revealed right now? Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. You'll be so glad you invested in this powerful series. In addition, you can order Rick Renner's book, Last Day Survival Guide. This spectacular book will awaken you to the times we are living in and will equip you to sail through these times successfully. We are in the last days. You and I need to know how to thrive in this last days environment. This is one book you must have. Right now, you can get Last Day Survival Guide for just $25 wherever books are sold, in stores and online, or by going to renner.org. Don't delay ordering your copy today, and don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call the number on your screen now, or go online to order. You know, as I'm thinking about what I've been teaching you today, I'm thinking about everybody who looks in the mirror every day and says, oh, wish I didn't have all those wrinkles. Well, you know, in the rapture of the church, everything's going to be transformed. You're going to get the eternal body lift. It's not just going to be a facelift. You're going to be given an immortal, indestructible body that no longer shows the effects of wear, tear, and age. All of that is going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, when we are raptured, that is in front of us. But after the rapture of the church, the Antichrist is going to show up. And that's what we're going to be talking about in tomorrow's program. And I want you to order my series, which is called The Coming of the Antichrist. Most people talk about the coming of Jesus, but after Jesus raptures the church, guess who's going to show up? The Antichrist. We need to know what the Bible says about the future comes with a great study guide. There's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. You will just devour this. And we're also offering you my brand new book that I want you to have. It's called Last Day's Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to help prepare you for these perilous times. The foreword is written by Perry Stone. This book is unlike any other book I've ever written. You know, all the books seem to be different. This may be my favorite. I really want you to order this book because it will help you know how to survive all the weirdness that seems to be happening in society today. Order one for you and order another one for a friend. And remember, if you need prayer, you can call us or you can write us and we'll pray with you. But Father, we thank you so much that we have the Word of God to stand on. What a foundation. We thank you we can know the future because the Bible tells us the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. God's word has so much power for you, so embrace it. Let it work in you, and I'll see you in tomorrow's program. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.